All right, so, uh, so I'll do my best to replace Don Mac. Um, maybe I can, maybe, maybe I can't. You tell me. Uh, first of all, I'm going to give you a rough intro to about myself, then some general overview of what exactly is IOTA, uh, and then we'll have a fairly quick develop a deep dive into the different technologies and just roughly how things work. All right, so about me, uh, I'm Andreas, hi. Uh, I'm an IOTA core developer and I'm based out of Berlin in Germany. I do all kinds of stuff from embedded to mobile. Uh, at the moment, I'm mostly focusing my work on the, uh, on the next generation of our, of our IOTA core uh, service, so to speak, which is being developed in REST, uh, and also see some application on embedded devices such as the Ruby tag. All right, so uh, where do we start? What is IOTA? Um, good question. Uh, I'm not gonna go, well, I'm going into detail. Uh, it's main, so the main innovation behind IOTA is that we are not based upon a blockchain, but uh, based upon a Tango. Um, okay, so Tango, I guess, sort of is a blockchain without the blocks and without the chain. Uh, that seems cut off, okay. Uh, but it's essentially based on the same principles uh, that in that it's decentralized, it's a peer-to-peer -peer network, it's append-only, so it's a read-only, database, so to speak. It's uh, trustless and it's permissionless. Okay, so um, this is sort of, uh, the contrast isn't too good, but this is sort of what the Tango looks like. It's a uh, directed acyclic graph um, where one re transaction always references two past transactions. Uh, compared to the blockchain, blockchain is sequential, the confirmation haps, uh, happens in, uh, in batches. Um, so our main difference to them, other than you know this being a tangle and not a blockchain, is also that we do not have any miners. There is a fixed uh, total cap, and the structure is quite different to the blockchain as well. Uh, if you want to read more about the underlying theory and stuff, there is in the IOTA white paper down there. Also, you can just go to IOTA.org and find more information there. Uh, it explains the. Uh, the mathematical and theoretical parts quite well. Although IOTA in its current version is a bit different, uh, the white paper documents the Tango. All right, so how, with IOTA, how do you make a transaction? So the first thing is that uh, you have to sign transaction, the transaction inputs, you create a signature for a specific transaction. Then when you've created your uh, bundle of transactions, so a bunch of transactions, you need to uh, do proof of work on them. So as opposed to Bitcoin where you've got the miners, we've here got uh, each individual device who wants to publish a transaction doing proof of work locally. And uh, for that, it's, uh, the proof of work always references two previous transactions, uh, thereby validating those. And once that's done, it's being uh, published to the, uh, to the Tangle. I'll go into more detail on that in a bit. Um, now, Quick overview, why is IOTA awesome? Well, the first and mostly important thing is that uh, there are no transaction fees. Um, uh, that's because each of one of you will be doing proof of work yourself. Uh, there's nobody you have to pay for running nodes for purchasing electricity, so to speak. And uh, as such, this is the only distributed ledger that can actually be used for micropayments because you can even send million of, uh, of a US dollar at the moment. Uh, to somebody without having to, without there being minimum uh, transaction value. And at the same time, given that we're basing everything off, this, uh, off the Tangle, uh, the good side is, is it's also scaling horizontally uh, because of the whole peer-to-peer -peer structure and because of the Tangle, where you can just add nodes and by having more nodes, the whole network grows more secure um, and also uh, faster. Now, in addition to horizontal scaling and our transaction fees, you can also uh, create subtangles, so to speak, uh, offline and only announce them to the main tangle later on. Uh, this means that uh, IOTA is partition tolerant and um, you could, for example, create a chain of 20 or 30 transactions, only publish them later on, even though you've already done proof of work on the individual transactions before. Okay. Uh, status quo and more. 
Uh, let's have a look at uh, where we are right now. So uh, development, or rather research and development on IOTA started back in 2015. Uh, the initial development was uh, publicly announced in July uh, 2016. We've since seen more than $2 billion uh, being transacted on the IOTA ledger without uh, transaction fees. And uh, we also ran simulations in the past and also at the moment are seeing more transactions per second than the blockchain. <coughs> Um, some background on the IOTA Foundation. Uh, the, the IOTA Foundation is essentially what runs and what drives the development behind, behind IOTA. It's a not-for-profit foundation registered in Berlin, uh, whose focus is the development and standardization of distributed ledger uh, protocols, but also to um, bring industry stakeholders to the table. So uh, we're focusing very strongly on joining together with other industry uh, stakeholders to do uh, proof of concepts and similar. Um, talking about these uh, oops, uh, proof of concepts, first of all, let's talk about our vision. Our vision is the uh, machine economy. IOTA was designed and developed with Falcon Mist Computing in, in, uh, in mind, uh, where especially a scenario in the future where data is no longer being processed centrally, but locally on the individual devices. Um, I mean, this is what will, um, what will empower and what will power the, uh, the next sharing economy where machines will, not, will share not just data but also trade resources such as excess electricity that can be bought by one device of another. I think some of you are working on uh, proof of concepts going in the very same direction. Uh, from our point of view, IOTA is the back backbone of the machine economy, uh, especially just because it allows this machine-to-machine -machine billing. All right. Let's have a quick look at some use cases that we're uh, in the process of developing right now. Uh, together with Energy, which is, uh, we're developing the Share and Charge project, which is essentially uh, allows private people to uh, deploy EV charging stations with, uh, with an add-on, um, so that they can then rent these EV charging stations to other people uh, by the kilowatt, kilowatt and be paid in IOTA. Another project that we're working on is, uh, is a big data marketplace for machines to buy and sell data. Uh, it's, you'll hopefully hear about all of that soon in, in press releases from us. And uh, another goal of us, proof of concepts we're working on are uh, industry 4.0 scenarios, for example, having a secure order trail for machines, uh, allowing remote control of infrastructure and similar. Um, in addition to Industry 4.0, there's also the whole supply chain tracking uh, scenario where you want to know where your, for example, where your crate was at a specific point in time, was it delivered properly on time, did the whole supply chain meet my, for example, temperature requirement, like I've got some very sensitive stuff that can't be, um, be stored above 10 degrees Celsius, uh, is, was that uh, requirement violated or not, and the other to ledger because you know, you can just publish transactions for free without having any, without having to have value transactions. It allows you to have access to this data without cost. Okay, that's uh, about all this on the rough vision and overview. Uh, I'm happy to talk more about, more about this more in detail if you come talk to me later on. Uh, I'm just going to go through a quick developer deep dive right now, um, give you some intro on how IOTA is, uh, how, the, how IOTA works internally and how it's structured. Let's start with uh, the most important thing, developer resources. If you want to go to this link, uh, Dominic wrote up a very nice, um, very nice few pages of documentation there uh, where you can find everything that I'm talking about in more detail. And please join our Slack. Uh, if you want to have, uh, if you have any questions that I cannot answer, uh, the other core, uh, the other foundation developers will be uh, available on that hashtag summer camp channel. Um, I think most of them are asleep right now uh, because we are spread all around the globe, but you will get an answer within a few hours at the latest. Okay, so uh, IOTA main features, uh, first of all there's data security because you know you have these transactions, you sign them, therefore they're authenticated and stored in a tangle and machine to machine micropayments. Um, Let's talk about what exactly does, it, uh, does, the, transaction look, uh, does the transaction look like. Uh, so 
it's essentially made up out of all these different fields. Uh, there's a transaction hash, there's a signature or message fragment. So you can either have a value transaction where, for example, you send so and so many tokens to, to another person or to another machine, or you can store uh, a message on there. Uh, then there's the receiving address, value timestamp, um, current and last index. These are required for a bundle because you often want to publish uh, transactions, uh, because you often want to publish multiple transactions at the same time. Um, and uh, these two, trunk transaction and branch transaction, are essentially what uh, are essentially the two transactions that your transaction refers to for doing proof of work on for and that your transaction validates. And in the end, the non C, which is the result of, um, of the proof of work algorithm. Now, uh, the proof of work algorithm, I'm just going to give a quick introduction about that. It's uh, based on Hashcash. Uh, Hashcash is this um, email anti spam protocol that was developed in 1996, um, where essentially you create a, uh, well, back then it was a SHA hash. Of, of a specific message and you incremented a counter at the very end of the message to uh, achieve zeros at the very end of that hash. And you had to look for these collisions by increasing a, a counter, essentially. And we're doing something very similar, just using a different algorithm uh, that's underlying all this. All right, so uh, bundles, I just talked about bundles. Bundles are essentially multiple transactions that have to be broadcasted together, have to be published to the tangle together. And um, they can, there's an unlimited number of transactions they can uh, put into one bundle, although we recommend staying below 10. Um, and if you have value transactions in there, then there's both the negative value changes contained in the bundle as also the positive value changes. And they always have to sum, uh, sum to zero. I'll send you links to these slides later on. Um, and because you're all developers, or most of you are, uh, you of course also want to know how do we actually use this. Um, there's uh, JavaScript libraries on there. Uh, there's also some web wallet for the testnet. Um, so we've got a testnet and a mainnet. I'll talk to you more about that later. And there's also a library for doing proof of work in a browser or, on, or if you're running a, um, a mobile app that's based upon JavaScript, then you can just integrate that there without having to resort uh, to a native implementation. And we also have Java libraries, maybe if somebody of you are trying to write uh, Java stuff. Um, I'm afraid that the C Sharp and Go libraries are a bit outdated at the moment, so I can't recommend you to use them. All right, so let's now go, go into detail on uh, potential use case applications because we're not, we're not just developing the, uh, the Tangle and IOTA, but we're also focusing on developing um, software that runs on top of this, so to speak, so additional protocols on top of IOTA. One of these is Flash, uh, which allows instant bidirectional off Tangle uh, payments and allows you to do the final settlement on Tangle. Uh, there is a specific use case that we uh, we are developing here right now with uh, Satoshi Pay. I'm not sure if you heard. We did a press announcement a couple of weeks ago uh, that Satoshi Pay is now moving over to the IOTA Tangle. Satoshi Pay is like doing micropayments for um, for websites similar to re, uh, to existing Flutter, for example. Uh, Flutter was where you, you subscribe to some website on a regular basis and uh, the author of that got money on a, yeah. Um, and Satoshi Pay and Flash are essentially uh, very similar to this. Um, you create a, a payment channel on uh, using, using a, using a um, content server, for, uh, using your partner. Then you fund that payment channel and then you can have multiple, multiple sets of transactions on this uh, payment channel and only have to uh, publish uh, only have to publish the final uh, set of transactions to the tangle so um, this means that you can do individual transaction off tangle and only publish things later on and at the same time um, for example if you're a flash channel partner 
that stuff that you do not agree with and uh, you want to abort, then you can just publish in, uh, in uh, the intermediate um, set of transactions and then desi decide together with your uh, flash partner in the end um, how you're going to resolve the issue with the, regarding the remaining funds. Uh, this is all backed by multi-sig um, transactions. There's a rough uh, graph of how this works over there. And I'm actually going to show you this real quick if I manage to uh, get my mouse cursor over there. Um, no, that's the wrong one. Uh, let's see. Yes. So this is uh, to pay dot. Oops. There we go. Um, okay, I don't seem to have some mouse cursor. Huh? Uh, there we are. All right, so uh, this is just a rough um, demo. Instant feedless microtransactions part by our flash channels. Um, Slash what? Um, that's pretty much what I just told you. Now, the idea here is essentially, you know, down here at the very far bottom, uh, you've got articles that you can um, that you can pay for using IOTA tokens. Now, let's open up one of these. Uh, introducing IOTA, okay, I know what IOTA is. I want to buy uh, an article about this. I need to pay some tokens. Uh, okay, right now, um, the Flash channel is not funded. Um, okay, I'm trying, let's see. Uh, yes. All right, so uh, I need to fund the channel first. Um, I'm hoping that does that. Yikes. Yes, fund the channel. Okay, so what's happening now is essentially that um, my browser is going to create a new, um, new multisig uh, together with uh, the content server. It's going to uh, fund the, uh, the flash channel with uh, tokens from the testnet and then it's going to do proof of work and then it's going to attach everything to the tangle. And this is taking so long mainly because we're waiting on that transaction to be confirmed. Um, in the meantime, other than looking at this beautiful spinner. Um, we currently have Flash implemented in JavaScript. Uh, the, the library for this is up on, uh, on a GitHub. If you go to, uh, so it's github.com slash iota latter and then there's iota.flash.js. Um, you should be able to use that on whatever target architecture you want to use it on. Um, okay. Testnet live demos, so um, you will be getting uh, testnet tokens if you want to interface with IOTA later on. I will show you how to do that. Um, and so right now it's waiting on, uh, on the confirmation of the, uh, of the initial funding. I can also, uh, yes, see, there we go. Uh, this down here is the proof of work, I guess because proof of work took a while in the browser. Um, what exactly does it say? Let's see. Yes, this looks like, right, so now we're funded. Cool. Uh, funded, what does that mean? So we've, uh, this is essentially one of those bundles from, uh, from the Flash channel that are created locally. The initial bundle is attached so that the, uh, the Flash channel is funded. And I can now see up here that, uh, where's my mouse cursor again? There we go. Uh, I think it should say 400i up there. So I can now use this to pay. Um, I, essentially what's happening here then is that I create a transaction locally, I sign it, I send it to the server, the server validates the signature, signs it as well, returns the signed bundle to me and then it provides me with, um, with the data I requested. 
Um, over here there is uh, also history of the channel transactions of course and I can then have a closer look at um, at the transactions here by for example whoops open up a uh, opening up a an explorer which runs on the hash uh, testnet and by inputting there's a user interface here uh, and for, in, by inputting this, so for example here I can see that the address has been attacked, uh, sorry this is oh, where's my mouse code again um, alright, so up here I can see that the address has been attached, there's a associated transactions which are all caused by the um, by the channel and I just didn't pick the right transaction for, uh, sorry, the right address for seeing that the channel has been funded in general, uh, whoops, what happens now is you can also close the channel that will attach all the transactions and everybody will receive the final results. Um, now let's go back into the presentation, if I manage to open it again. Uh, no. Okay, this is when you do not use established window manager systems on a browser, on, uh, on your computer. Uh, uh, present, please. There we go. All right, something else. So this is Flash. Uh, I guess it's to some extent similar to the Lightning Network. Um, then we're also working on allowing you to um, have secure authenticated uh, messages on the Tangle. So for example, the, when I talked to you earlier about the signature or message fragment part of the transaction where you could either put a signature in if you have a value transaction or an arbitrary message, then in that case, anybody can send any message to any address. So you need to be able to validate that the, um, that the message is authentic, that it's coming from the right person, and you also want to have some means of security here. For this, we developed MAM, uh, Mask Authenticated Messaging, which the Ruby folks use. And this is essentially our version of symmetric encryption with forward secrecy, uh, based upon local trees. Uh, find me later on if you want more details on this. And some examples in general for IOTA and for our library use cases is uh, a very simple IOTA leaderboard which essentially shows um, transactions uh, against a specific address and the, uh, the Ruby token that the Ruby folks are going to introduce later on, right after this presentation. Um, so, if you're interested in, you know, publishing your, uh, what you did here, maybe writing up a developer story, stuff like that, we do have an IOT ecosystem fund. Um, if you're interested, get in touch with us later on. Uh, it's, it was funded by way less cash initially, but by now our valuation has risen. So, it's $10 million now, I guess. Okay, so uh, how do we go about this? Uh, I talked about the testnet for rapid prototyping. The testnet, is, the main difference between testnet and mainnet is essentially that um, the complex, uh, that the difficulty of the proof of work is reduced on testnet. Uh, and so I can provide you with seeds for the testnet uh, together with uh, nodes that you can talk to that can do the proof of work for you. It's all part of the libraries. And um, if you then later on want to run your demo on the mainnet, come talk to me, come find me, write me an email on Slack, uh, whatever, and I'll organize some mainnet tokens for you. Thank you. Uh, questions, please, if you have any.